So without much further ado, I would love, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, to welcome. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> All right, I would love for us to put our hands together until he gets here. The man of God, Abmo, as he walks on stage, please, with a standing ovation, Mavuno Church, put your hands together for Apostle Mo until he gets here. This is our last day. You can do better than that. Come on. He has not arrived here. He has not arrived here. Come on. Come on up more. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, man of God. Welcome. Yes, come on. Continue. Come on, Mavuno. All right. Come on. Oh, yes. Wow, me too. I hope today you are in the monitor. <laughs> Can you guys stretch your hands as we pray for the apostle today? Lord God, we thank you for the, for the man of God you've sent to us. This man has spoken to us, not just theory stuff, but he's spoken to us practice stuff, things we can see. And they are living amongst us as a testimony of what we are seeing. So I pray right now that, oh God, as he brings, Lord, this last installment today, that, Father God, you will open our hearts. You will open our minds. Lord, if you need to switch some of our minds for us to follow, sweet it, oh Lord. For us to follow with nothing hindering us. So I pray for him right now as we speak. Speak through him, oh Lord. Your people are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Have your seats. Good morning. Wow, what a week. What a week. Amen. Has God been good to you? Hey. Come on. So, haha, <laughs> I will not ask this question. No, I'll, I'll just tell you a story. So, today, I wasn't a pastor. I wasn't a believer. Hey. Are there any people? I wasn't even a new believer. Hey. <laughs> yeah. For behold, I woke up, and behold, the sun woke up with me. And I thought I would tell you about it. Because you may get to a point where you think that God works because of your prayers. You get to a point where you think you're the one who determines what God does. That's legalism. You have to be a person of grace. Some days you wake up and it's good. You flow with the prayer. Some days the alarm didn't work. Something. You woke up and the light is coming through the curtains. That's not the time to move into condemnation and unbelief. I'm sure there are days Jesus didn't pray. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I really think so. Even David or Paul. I think some of the days you just are busy or tired. So you have to be a person of grace. Amen. In fact, as I was thinking about it, I got an expression. It is God using you. It's not you using God. It takes, you can think about that. Is God using you or are you using God? Once you understand the order of things, you can, be, you can have grace. Amen. One time, Pastor Angela came to me and said, I don't know what's happening with me. I, I, I'm not praying. I, I can't read my Bible. I'm just there. And they told her, sleep. <laughs> Rest. Relax. Eat. Ice cream. <clears throat> yeah, true story. Yeah, there are people here, I will not name them. I've had to take them for ice cream. Yeah, when I feel like they think they rotate the earth on its axis. 
be like, let's go for ice cream so you know that life goes on. Amen. So I just thought I would share a little bit of that uh, so that you understand the totality of the message. It's not just about being a man of prayer and a woman of prayer. It's also about being a man and woman of grace who understands that even when you pray, it is God who is calling you to it. Amen. We are talking about paved, the making of a movement, the, the functional aspects of a movement. Prayer, uh, what is the P? Prayer. E, evangelism. Ah, uh, You saw what happened yesterday? Yeah. I imagine if you did that constantly. Prayer, evangelism, and then visitation. The people who got saved yesterday, did we take down their contacts, names and phone numbers and where they stay? And then you unleash a visitation what? Team to go visit them, check on them, and connect them to a discipleship community. Am I making sense? That's how it works. And then T is for teaching and H is for healing. Really, it's a, for the supernatural, but uh, we think it sounds healing covers. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor M, Pastor Carol, for having us, feeding us, overfeeding us. In fact, some people's weighing scales. I'll not name them. Their name starts with the letter of the alphabet. <laughs> they're going to go home and the weighing scale will be like, Alas, master, where have you been? <laughs> Are you one at a time? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wow. You, you have really spoiled us and we are grateful. And uh, exec team, thank you for spending time with us, accommodating our weird, crazy ideas and teaching us the things we are learning from you. And everyone else, thank you for having us. This is our last day of being here in this environment. Thank you so much. We have shared some very hard things sometimes and you've taken them graciously. I haven't seen people walk out in protest. Uh, and come back with pavers. I'm grateful. Thank you. We are all in a journey. Amen. Uh, I, uh, I, I want to share a prophetic word. Is that allowed? From Isaiah 2 2. Isaiah 2 2. Isaiah 2 2 is coming. I will just read it as it comes from my head. And it shall come to pass in the latter days, amen, that the mountain of the Lord's house will be established on top of all the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it, amen. Amen, amen. Mavuna, are you ready for that word? Do you receive that word? Because it shall come to pass that this mountain, the Lord's house called Mavuno Church, shall be established. Shall be established on top of the mountains. Shall be exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow to it. Nations, nations shall flow to it. Yeah, nations shall flow to it. You will see it come to pass. May the Lord help you be around to see it come to pass. Because it shall come to pass. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God gave us many words from Isaiah. And we started believing them, including Isaiah 60, verse 22. A little one shall become... A thousand and a small and a strong nation, I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. And suddenly, people's churches went to thousands. Right, guys? This is where people were pastoring a few, 200, 300, they all, many of them went to thousands. Some of the thousanders are not even here. 
How many locations do we have now that are above 1,000? How many? About six, seven. Yeah. Seven locations above 1,000 in a year. In a year. It's about the word of the Lord. People, the word of the Lord is powerful. Yeah. If you, if you doubt me, doubt me, I don't mind it. Don't doubt the word of the Lord. Yeah. I think it's Isaiah or someone who prophesied that Babylon would be no more and no one would believe him. It's like, are you insane? Do you know even what you're talking about? It's no more. So, a little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. Many campuses here are going to go to 1,000 in a short time. I've seen it happen. It can happen with yours. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand. Yes, in the name of Jesus, it shall happen. It shall happen. And then a little one shall become a thousand. So, and then the mountain of the Lord's house will be established on top of the mountains. You know, I know you guys from looking at how we do fearless, we believe, we know the different mountains of influence, media, government, economy, family, etc. Do you know what's going to happen? The mountain of faith. The mountain of the Lord's house. Where is my scripture? <laughs> Please give me that scripture. This wasn't planned. I just took a short walk and okay. Just give me that Isaiah 2 again. So that we can see it live. The mountain of the Lord's house. The mountain of the Lord's house. That, that, that church. Yeah. And by the way, the only part of the scripture that works for you is the part you believe. Mm. Yeah. You, there's a reason you've never walked on water. The mountain of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains. Church is not just one of the seven mountains. Church is the principal mountain. Church is the principal mountain. And anyone who serves in church, you're serving in the principal mountain. It's like you have many cities in Kenya, but Nairobi is the capital. When you, uh, some people are not getting it. Because there are some of you who think that becoming a president of this nation is a higher calling than being a pastor. It is not. You can hear being drop. Quietness, Presbyterian church. No, 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 no. no. That scripture keeps going away. When I'm about to move something, the scripture keeps going away. Keep it there for a little while until I'm done, okay? Today is our last day here in this setting. And Just bring me those verses about shellacking. Yeah. Someone give Pastor B3 my. Yeah, come, come. Get them and come. I want to first teach you something. Today is about teaching, so let me teach you something important. Something important. Just come. Yeah. Second Chronicles 2020. Get, come with your Bible. Second Chronicles. Is it First Chronicles? Second. Second Chronicles 2020. And uh, who's that? Read it for us, then you'll be finding the other one when you, yes. as I'm explaining this one. We usually teach together with this tall lady. Come on now. Hey! <laughs> Okay, Second Chronicles 2020. 
So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Amen. So believe in the Lord, and you shall be established, rooted. Yeah, mizizid. The Hebrew word is kun. Is it kun? K W K K U W N. Established. You know people who are established? They are solid Christians. They've believed the Lord. They are people of the word. They are firm. They don't go around from place to place looking for some miracle or some new doctrine or some new thing. They are well established. They are firm. They, they, you can count on them any day. They are stable people. Amen. Don't we all, aren't we, aren't we, I think I'm talking to those kind of people right now. I, 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 I am that person. Look, you can't shake me from the word of God. Yeah. I've, I've been reading it since primary school. I'm well established in it. So he's saying, believe in the Lord and you will be what? Estab you, need, you need that. Otherwise, you'll be going from one mountain to another, to another valley looking for the other man of God, the other one. Now this one spits fire, no, the other one pours water. The other one, you have to put your left shoe on your right leg and your right shoe on your left leg and then the miracle will come. No, forget that stuff. Yeah. Believe in the Lord and you will be established. established. That's what you need. Paul talks about being rooted and grounded in love in Ephesians 3. Rooted and grounded in love. That's being established. It's like, don't tell me stuff. I know, I know God loves me. I know who I've believed and persuaded he's able to keep that. You know that's a scripture, but because it is in song, which I've committed unto him against that day. So that's one dimension of faith living. But there's a dimension you might not know about. It's the dimension of believing the prophetic word. And what does he say there? He says, believe his prophets and you will be and you shall prosper. Now, the Hebrew word is shalak. Is it shalak? Shalak. Shalak with a T. It's like shalak. That's the Hebrew word for that. Prosper. It's not just, you see, when you say prosper, people think about money. No. It's not money. It's, it's ad, like rapid advancement in a thing. Am I making sense? Now, th that's another dimension that many people have never even thought about or known. It comes by the prophetic word. That's why you have a lot of well-established Christians who do their Bible study in the morning and evening and have a prayer life. And they, they, it's okay. their lives are actually good. But there's nothing extraordinary about them. They are not changing their nation. We were that church a year ago. We were an established church. We taught the word faithfully for 14 years. Sometimes we taught it the way probably Pastor Edward Dondachi would encourage us to teach it. Mm. Now I'm making a, an assumption. But verse by verse, you know what I'm saying? You take the, the book of Ephesians and you take three months. There was a time we did Galatians. Galatians well, like, there's a time we did like four months. Mm. One of those. That, we taught we are a word church. You will not find me quoting from Hezekiah because I know it's not there. <laughs> are, are you listening? We had believed the Lord. Every word of the Lord he gave us, we believed it. We walked in it. We were generous. 
we were passionate, we were faithful, we loved, we, f we, we did it. And it was good. And I don't think anyone from Kampala would say, oh, such a failure church. We were not a failure church. We were a good church. We were one of the churches of choice if you really wanted to be a serious Christian. We believed the Lord. Then a year ago, we started listening to a man who is also a prophet. And we believed the prophetic word. And we have shellacked. We are prospering. We are having sudden breakthrough. Did I tell these guys about Moses Kalanzi? Yes, yes, yes. But you can tell them again. Oh, I told someone else. There's a guy called Moses Kalanzi who came to our mentorship program after we had started shellacking. People came and said, okay, teach us. With 70 people in his church. 70 eight people in years. February. After eight years of ministry. Eight years, 70 people. Right now, he has 2,700 people. After eight months. That's what we call shellacking. You can be well established. Everything is going well at your campus. What? We were planted. We are well. Things. Yeah. People are getting saved. We are running Mizizi. We are doing discipleship communities. We are doing evangelism. Things are okay. We are not a bad church. And then a prophetic word comes. Like the one I'm giving you right now. And you probably are thinking I'm just saying something. From Isaiah 2, 2, it wasn't part of my teaching. And if you believe it, you will shellac. I tell you, we've, the good thing is the thing we've talked to you about, we have seen them. In May, we planted a, a church in, in eastern Uganda, just east of Ginger. The pastors of that church, both the gentleman and the lady are Australian. All nations. Now, look. As of December, uh, like, there was no plan of planting that church. <laughs> there was, what? Who? No, these are nice guys. They are they're serving God. They are missionaries. Then the idea for them to plant that, because we are running it as a hosting center, which started growing, like, no, you're going to plant. No, they planted. Now, their church is bigger than the sending church that sent them to be missionaries. Because we planted that church with about 130 people mm -hmm. in May. It now has more than 400 people. That is shalak. All nations shall flow to it. Amen. Why don't you read for us that, that scripture? Then I might go into teaching. Might <laughs> being the key word. Ezra 6, 14. Mm. So the elders of the Jews built, mm -hmm. and they prospered. Wait, wait. They did what? They built. You shall build. Amen. You shall build. Yes. You will build. Yes. Amen. I'm telling you. Don't dismiss this. I'm telling you, it's not your money that builds the church. It's not your budget that builds the church. <laughs> we had been building one project for 14 years until when? December, this last year. And then we, we shall act. Right now we have five building projects. Five. Five going on at the same time. <laughs> Something happens when you believe God. And a prophet, prophetic words. So you shall build. Amen. Yeah. You will build. And of course some campuses are thinking we don't yet have land. Who told you that you are down? Just believe the word. So in this story, these guys have come from exile and they are trying to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, right? So that's the context. Uh -huh. And then the elders. Go. Go ahead. So the elders of the Jews built mm. and they prospered mm. through the prophesying. Hey. Of they mm. did 
kuwa prospered through the connections no through knowing the whoever no they shall act uh-huh through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo mm. and they built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the command of Cyrus Darius and Artaxerxes king of Persia why don't you expound it for us? This people might think you're only good for reading that text. <laughs> Shalak, come on. <laughs> wow. So, what I see here is there was a command already given by God and by the, 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 the kings Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, that they had given the command for them to build. And however, there was the, 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 the prosperity, the sudden breakthrough came by the prophesying of Haggai the prophet. So God can give us a word. For example, Isaiah 60, 22, which is a word that we've embraced as worship harvest, over the past one year, is a word that has always been there. The word is there. The command of God is already available. And God watches over his word to fulfill it. Mm. So he, they, that word is already established in heaven. It's available for us. It has the power to be fulfilled. However, when the prophesying, even Jesus had to be prophesied for years for him to finally appear ma, 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 ma. and for that sudden breakthrough to come. So when God sends his prophets, usually the preachers, the, the people who, they, as, as now Apostle is teaching, the prophecy is coming. The prophecy I receive releases the capacity for sudden breakthrough to happen concerning the word that is already established. Because it says that they built, but they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. That what brought the prosperity in the building, you've seen people who have started building and not finished. Because it ends by saying, they've built and finished. So, they, they, they are, I mean, we were building one project for 14 years. We were established in the nation. But now we have started experiencing prosperity, sudden breakthrough, because we believe the word of the prophet. And he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. So the same word can be given here and we are all seated. And if two people receive it, they will experience sudden break. Not because the word did not have the power to, to and release. And the prophet's release. reward is? is not the clothes they are wearing. No! Even though some dress quite sharply. <laughs> the prophet's reward is the fulfillment, yes. the manifestation yes. of the prophecy. The prophecy. Keep going. Of the word that they have given. That yeah. is the reward of the prophet. That the reward is that the things the prophet has spoken come to pass. But you see, the fulfillment of that prophecy is not about the prophet. You can have a true prophet among you and still not see sudden breakthrough because we have not received the prophet in the name of a prophet. If Apostle Moses to me is a prophet, he will give a word and I will see the fulfillment of that word, or I may not. If to me he's not a prophet, he's just another guy speaking, the words will pass over. But when he speaks a word, I catch it, and it's as good as done in my life. I expect it. I receive instruction around it. I start building systems around expectation for that word, you know, re, 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 restructuring, because the word has been given, and I believe it is coming to pass. So I start living as if it is coming to pass, and indeed, it comes to pass. Wow. Let him who has ears to hear, cried the prophet, hear. Amen. Thank you, Pastor B3. Woo. Woo. Amen. All right. That's a mode of teaching. Yeah, you can teach prophetically. By the way, do you know that all the prophecies, it's not like they say the prophet is there, they say, now this is a prophecy. Start listening. No. The guy is just talking about current events. 
Eh, a virgin shall have a, a, a child and his name shall be what, what, what. And he continues. And you completely miss it because you are here for someone. Most of the prophecies that I give, I don't say I'm prophesying. I mean, I, I, I had to be kind enough to you to tell you I'm prophesying <laughs> so that you understand that I'm what? Prophesying. But most of the prophecies I give, I'm teaching. And in the middle of teaching, I, I prophesy sometimes. And the people who receive those, pro you can go and double check with all the people. Hey, oh, just, just go. These people have the contacts of worship harvest people. If you have a worship harvest friend, just text them saying, is this thing, are these things true? So I, 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 I have to tell you that maybe because you are not yet in the culture of understanding how that works. Amen. All right. Uh, Amen. Come on. All right. Prophesying. Before, in 2019, I started telling these leadership teams that it would be an amazing thing if, instead of gathering people into our buildings, if we found a thousand homes of people who can invite their neighbors to their homes and we send them the signal of our services. What year was I saying that? I need your, I need your help, people. It, wasn't, it was way before that. 2019, 2018, 2019. 2019, I started off emphasizing it, telling guys, I think we should try this thing out. Instead of gathering people, have a thousand homes. If, it, if you had a thousand homes and each one invited ten of their neighbors and they watched the service together and then they just pray with them and then they start discussing how they can improve the neighborhood. Yeah. And then lockdown came. I had already cast the vision when I didn't know I was casting the vision. What happened in lockdown? How many host homes did we have initially? About, about 1,400 with about 1,100 hosting regularly, Sunday. Right now, how many? Do you even have the, those records? They should, in, does the report still include host homes? Or oh, you, you checked it? There's a report from, you have it? Just double check. I know all of you, like, you are wondering if you have data. But I think now we're above 2,000, probably 2,400, 2,500. I know we're above 2,000 host homes. We had 17,000 people attend our services last Sunday. Where did they attend them from? Host homes. Amen. I'm just trying to show you the power of prophecy and how it can change your ministry life. And anyway, so 2020, beginning of the year, I start prophesying you're a disease free zone. You're an economic powerhouse. And none of your loved ones will perish without receiving Christ. Those were the three words. People even formed t shirts, artwork, everything. That's John. Al beginning of the year, in fact, very beginning of the year. February, people start being aware about COVID. March, lockdown, it hits us. And guess what? We're like, we already received the word. And so, anyway, I'm just telling you, we've seen these things work. And then, m the most devastating thing about COVID was the economy. It's like everyone from Worship Harvest I talked to, it's like theirs, their business went like this. It's like, you guys are abnormal. People are crying, you are soaring. Yeah, Because if God says you're an economic powerhouse, it doesn't say in what season that will be. 
Let me move to today's teaching. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So in that time, no one, like almost no one got COVID, the first round. Then this new wave came, and we got a word there would be outbreak of healings. Then all of, it's like all of us, all of us got it. And just got out. We lost two members in the church. Church of 12,000 people, we lost two members. That's the, that's the power of prophecy. Any church at our size lost a lot more members. Give me, we are talking about faith, prayer, evangelism, visitation, teaching and healing. Give me Acts, uh, where we were, Acts uh, 2. Let's go back to Acts 2. Just give me verse 42. And I want to believe you have the New International Version of that verse and whatever other version. So let's start with what you've prepared. And if you have an IV, you can give it to us after. Verse 42, Acts 2, 42 to 43. We are, teaching, we are talking about now what? Teaching. The power of teaching. Jesus tells his disciples, go make disciples of all the nations. And uh-huh. what does he say? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then what's next? Teaching them to observe, to obey. Discipleship is teaching. Jesus was called teacher. Rabbi, discipleship is simply teaching, actually, if you think about it. The core of discipleship is teaching. To be a disciple means to be a teacher. And he says, teaching them to observe or teaching them to obey. Teaching, listen to this, teaching is a seed. Teaching is the seed you plant for the harvest of what? Obedience. Many times we expect people to obey things they have not been taught. Because we expect them to know them. You should know this. You were raised in a family. You should know. No, no, no. You are the disciple. Because you are the disciple, you are the teacher. And you can't expect to harvest maize a maize crop, if you have it planted, maize seeds. You see, for everything in life, there's always a seed and a harvest. Paying attention is the seed you sow for the harvest of learning. Am I making sense? Ha, 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 ha. The Bible says that everyone is a friend to him who gives gifts. Gifting people is the seed you sow for the harvest of friends. Have you asked yourself why you don't have friends? Just check your gift budget. Yeah. You see, life is simple. We complicate it. No one has a serious gift budget who has a deficit of friendships. Because it is the word of the Lord. Everyone is a friend to him gives gifts. So, the seed, time, and harvest. Everything in life here on earth, as long as earth endures, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Everything, literally everything is governed by the principle of the seed, the time, and the harvest. I think I have low battery. It's red. This is green, meaning you can proceed. So, it's the principle of seed time and habit. So, ask yourself, in what areas are you... Look, never ever sit there and think God is bad, my neighbor is bad, my pastor is bad, my boss is bad, whatever. Just ask yourself, what seed haven't I sown yet? Even you, you're a product of a seed. For crying out loud. 
A seed that will be planted for you to come forth. Hallelujah. So if there is any deficit in any area of your life, your investigation should always lead you to what seed have been I planted. Amen. Husbands love your wives. That's a seed. And then you go into the process of finding out what love looks like to the person. Because it's not obvious. Today they want gifts. Tomorrow they want their hand held. The other day they want you to wash the dishes. The other day they want you to cut the, the grass. The other day they want you to do the homework with the kids. The other day they want flowers. You're like, what worked last week can't work this week. It's like a moving target. And then if you are one of those people who think, I've figured her out. The Lord have mercy on you. Yeah, you can't figure her out. It's an ongoing project of constant investigation. And cost correction. That's the seed you plant to have a good marriage. A good marriage doesn't come by prayer. My God, my God. We've prayed for people. We've prayed. You know one of the most wasted resources in the church is prayer. We pray for things we shouldn't be praying for. For example, those of you who are praying about money, you're saying that Jeff Bezos is the most the biggest intercessor in the world. Yeah, you don't gain, gain financial advancement by prayer. You don't. Prayer is not in the, in the success equation. All of this to tell you that there is always a seed that is planted for a certain kind of Harvest and wisdom is knowing that if you want avocado uh, fruits, you should be planting avocado seeds. Because we plant all the wrong kind of seeds for a certain harvest. And then we start blaming God and everyone else why we, our lives are the way they are. No. Amen. Wow. I got an amen from Pastor M. That's, that's like covers everyone. Hey. So I've gone all those ends to try and bring you back to the point that teaching is the seed for obedience. In the discipling environment, you don't teach for knowledge. No, it doesn't say teaching them to know. You teach for Obedience. So until the person is behaving differently, your lesson is not done. You teach and teach and teach and teach until you see results. Verse 42 of Acts 2. It's coming back. It's coming back. Let's read together. And they continued, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. Verse 43, I'm going to be combining teaching and healing. Then fear came upon every soul, and many signs were done through the apostles. Do you guys, by any chance, have the NIV version of that text? If you can, kindly give it to me and i explain something here. Important. Uh, verse 42. Uh, who has NIV there? Please, just stand up and read it for me. All the believers, uh-huh devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And then something else happens. But uh, let me focus on verse 42. The, he says in the other version, they continued steadfastly. Uh, 
What does it say here? They were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Uh, do you know that in a church like Mavuno, there are people who are apostles? Because it would never be planted without apostleship. Yeah. The planters and those who work with them at that level are the apostles. <laughs> Devoted. You must be devoted to the apostles' teaching. In this context, that would be Pastor M, Pastor Kara, and the executive team. That's the apostolic team, so to say. And this church will not go where it needs to go if you are not devoted to their teaching. If you don't continue steadfastly, yeah, and I feel like someone is actually growing a big head. The more I teach, the more resistant you become. Don't be. It's for your own good. You see, if you are devoted to Stephen Fatick's teaching, you need to join that church. Because he's an amazing preacher. Not the but he's not the pastor of Mavuno Church. Yeah. He's not the apostle of here. You see people, <laughs> if you are listening to someone else, don't come for miracles here. Yeah. Go for the miracles to whoever you listen. Because the, the signs follow the teaching. Because it says they went everywhere preaching with signs following. So whoever is teaching you, that's where your signs are. That's where your power is. That's where your healing is. This is the last day. So, I'm going. I'm telling you, this, all these people, they had to repent. And all the people in worship they had to repent in that area and then miracles broke out. Yeah. You're expecting Mose to perform miracles, but you're listening to someone else. It doesn't work. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and then signs and wonders were done through the hands of the apostles. Am I making sense? Devoted, you see, these guys come. Pastor Jamie and B3, come, come quickly. Just move it, move it. You can see that they are devoted to each other, even their things are the same. Are you devoted? So, forsaking all others. I am devoted to this man. Yay! Can you be devoted to him and to me at the same time? I'm sure you are, even you are like, even in the example, it is bad. Bad, very bad. Mm. Yeah, even in the example, it doesn't work. Nope. I don't work. <laughs> devoted means singularity of heart. Yeah. Singleness of heart. You see, the person we expect Pastor B3 to have most dinners, teas, and other such with is me. <laughs> what happens when every day she's hanging out with some other dude? They are at CJ's. They are at Java's, they are at Java House, they are at Mlalongo, they are at uh, Siokimau, then they are wherever. Like, we are like, what, what, what do you think is going to start happening in our minds? What's going on? What's going on? We thought you were 
devoted to him. Who is this other dude you are hanging out with? He's a dead man. <laughs> Am I making sense? So when we see you listening to the other one, listening to the other one, listening to the other one, reading that book, reading that book, reading that book, but you've never read Fearless. You're not devoted. You're not devoted. And don't expect a movement without devotion. Wow. It can't happen. God in his wisdom in a committee which you didn't attend and to which we are not invited chose the apostles of this house. Guys, you can go and be sitting. I'll call you back. <laughs> Devoted. <laughs> What's your degree of devotion to the apostles' teaching of this house? Let me give you another example. This one I learned from Bishop Doug. So even when you hear it, you'll hear that it's Bishop Dougish. No, no, no. This is not so bad. So, so let's say Pastor Bithri come back with Pastor Angie. Oh, she's not here. So these two are friends. Like they are so good friends. One time I had to start ordering them not to sit together in the meetings because they would be making noise. They're always on the class monitors, noisemakers list during very serious meetings. I'll be like, no, 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 you go sit opposite the table. Now, let's say she got pregnant, okay? Let's say. I think these lights are too bright. But let's say she got pregnant. No, no, no. <laughs> this is not an instruction. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let's say she got pregnant and developed a baby in the womb and brought forth a baby. Do you know, even if they are friends, yeah, yeah. the milk is not going to develop in this one's breasts. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Even if the doctors say, but she has better milk. No. <laughs> she has better milk. No, her husband is a doctor, so he knows exactly what she should be eating in order for the baby to have the best milk. No. The milk is in the flasks of whoever has the baby. Someone over there is getting the point. Someone over there is getting the point. Some people here are getting the point. Yeah. Yeah. It de- huh, this thing is online, so I'm, I can't go beyond that. But it doesn't matter how cool and nice the other person's boobs are. The milk will come in the ones of the one who has had the baby. That is how God has ordered it and you can't change it. The best milk of the word that should be fed to this church for it to grow and become what it should be is right there. It's in his messages. It is in his books. It is in his podcasts. It is in his programs. It is in couples and money. It is in wherever, wherever God wants for this movement. He has invested in a person. So when you don't do couples and money, don't wonder why you're broke. It doesn't work. You people 
us go and sit down. Look, if you haven't understood at this point, yeah. this business of going around, oh, the, have you listened to this preacher? Oh, my God, this one is hot, 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 hot. Hey, hey, have you read this book? Have you read that book? Let me tell you, you can't have a movement without devotion to the apostles' doctrine and teaching. Does any of you have a live Bible? Analog? Guys, here, here. Do you have? Okay. Okay, let me borrow it. I hope <coughs> it's one of the versions that is less adulterated. NLT. Wow. I'm lost in, in, in translation. <coughs> anyway. It's good to have two versions. You can read for me what I need. You have a mic. Give me Jeremiah 3.15 and Jeremiah 23.4. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, people. Are you with me? Please read if you're reading. Jeremiah 3.15. Yeah. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Mm. I will give you shepherds according to my heart. God does God doesn't give you shepherds according to your heart. No. You see, one of the things you should quickly come to terms with is that you're not in this church by accident. Yeah. Of all the churches you could have belonged to, look at Anne Marie from Uganda. And tell me, why are you a member of this church? Like it takes a miracle of God if you think about it. It is God who gives you the shepherds according to God knows exactly what this movement needs and selected the exact shepherd and shepherds he, need, he knew this movement needed. And it is according to his heart for you, for this movement, and they'll feed you with what? Knowledge, Knowledge and understanding. So your role is to be devoted. Read from Jeremiah 23, 4. <clears throat> Jeremiah 23, 4. Yep. I, I will set up shepherds over them mm. who will feed them. Hey. And they shall fear no more, mm -hmm. nor be dismayed, nor shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Ma, 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 ma. What will happen when they have feed shepherds who are feeding them? What will happen? One, no more fear. They will fear no more. They will not be dismayed. But I like this last part. Nor shall they be lacking. God's agenda for you is to have no lack. Yeah. And his design for you is that happens through the shepherds he has given you. Whichever campus you are at, your campus pastor, that is your shepherd. There's no accident. Because that shepherd is there by the authority of your apostolic team. Amen. I feel like I'm preaching better than you're listening. Mm. Neither shall they be lacking. No shall they be lacking. If you're lacking, ask yourself, who is it that I'm not listening to? that I should be listening to. Devoted, 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 devoted. Ah. Jesus went about teaching, preaching, and healing. That was his ministry. Let me show you something here in Acts. Acts 19. No, let me first show you something in Acts 15. Let me see. 
Now remember in Acts 15, these people had a, a, a serious argument eh? about circumcision. So Paul and Barnabas and others, they go all the way back to Jerusalem, to, Jerusalem, to the what? To the apostles to determine the matter. Now Paul didn't say, you guys, I have seen the dead raised, I have healed the sick, don't waste my time. If you want to circumcise your converts, circumcise them. Me, I have a revelation. Do not waste my time. What did Paul do? He humbled himself. Knowing that he had a revelation, he walked all the way back to Jerusalem to have their, those people who were there. Who were, because he could have said, we are out here in the field. We are preaching the gospel. We've planted this, okay, this campus in Mlolongo, wherever, Kangami. Now these other people, they are just there. Now they, they want to decide things for us. Have you ever felt that attitude in your heart? Don't put up your hand. They're like, they don't understand what's on the ground. Ground is different. Paul didn't say ground what? Paul didn't say ground is different. He went back all the way to Jerusalem wasting his precious time. Not really wasting. Paul understood spiritual authority. If there is a man who understood spiritual authority, it was Paul. No wonder he did the things he did. He, he takes off weeks to go back to Jerusalem to have the apostles explained to what's going on. And then the apostles wrote. Remember how they wrote? The apostles, they wrote after they had had a hot argument. Because says there was no small, whatever, the dissension among them. And then Peter stood up, the leader, had to determine a direction. And told them, reminded them how he had gone to Cornelius' house and how the Gentiles had received the Holy Spirit without circumcision. So they write to them, very simple theology. They wrote to them a few things which I'm not going to go into. Now I want to, I, I, I want to show you what happened. So they wrote. Now when they came back, Paul and who? And uh, Barnabas, they had the sharp argument about Mark. So they went different ways. Paul went with Silas, Barnabas went with Mark. Remember that? Is this the new members class? <laughs> Let me show you what happened. Oh, Lord, show it to me. I'm in Act 16. I'm about to find it. Guys, where is that verse? Declaring to them that the decrees. Lord, show it to me. These people need to see this verse. I should have put it in my notes. Yeah, the decrees from the apostles. Yeah, I found it. I found it. Act 16, verse 4. Verse 4. This is when Paul is, Paul is with Silas, then they get Timothy to come along. Yeah? So let me read for you verse 4. And as they went through the cities, this is Paul, Silas, Timothy, and their team. Uh huh. Are you listening now? You need to, please. Especially if for you, ground, eh? Ni ground, what? Nico, ground different. You people. I need the proper Swahili. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for ground, ni different. He says, and as they went through the cities, ground, they delivered to them the decrees to keep which were determined by the apostles and elders at Hill City, at Jerusalem. Are you following? Paul, the man of God, with deep revelations, when they went to the cities, what was he telling them? He was teaching them. He was telling them that what the apostles from Jerusalem had said. Paul didn't come with a different revelation. Even though he had a different revelation. You know, this guy has already spent 14 years in, in Arabia. He has seen the Lord. But is ah. You want to see the next verse? Give me the next verse in that beautiful uh, 
so that churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. Amen. What is the first word of that sentence? Oh. As a result, they, f- they were strengthened in their faith and grew larger. This is the increased in number daily. Why? Alignment with the apostles in Jerusalem. Uh, uh, come share with bring come Pastor Bethany, come share with us the story of your location. Because let me tell you guys, uh, even if she's come, she comes, eh? Please listen to me and uh, please don't think I'm tooting her horn. This girl can preach. This girl can preach. Like, I can tell you, I don't know, sorry for the bias, but I don't know any woman preacher in the world today who can preach like this woman. Yeah. And I've told her before, I've told her before, this is not news to her. Bring me anyone. Oh, those wonderful people you follow. I can't find one. Honestly. Who can teach? And you're like, why, wh- where have I been all my life? How, how come I never understood that? She's right here. T- t- share a little bit of your story. Your location, your teaching, your preaching. It's immense growth. And then what has happened in the last one year? Thank you, Apostle. (coughs) So I think I told a bit of the journey of starting to teach. Really, I'd never considered myself a teacher. I was a worship leader. I'm very happy to be a worship leader. And my dream was one day to just be Apostle's PA. Help him. Yeah, and when I left my work, that's what I came in to do, to help him just make sure that things are working, uh, help him manage his stuff. So he pushed me to teach. At first it was, I thought it's because there's no one, so he's moved the worship leader to start preaching. Uh, I eventually I thought maybe he wants to destroy the congregation. He's finding a way to kill it so that we only have one where he had gone. I honestly had all these ideas, and th- the worst thing for me was the day before preaching. My husband knows, like, I would be emotionally unstable. I had constant running stomach. Um, and I was angry before I taught and angry after I taught uh, all the time. So I, there, was, it, there was no, and then I would come and go off point and tell stories from, like, my childhood the whole time instead of preaching a sermon. It was really bad. But I remember my teaching journey became better because what we would do, I, I had a, a regular job, but on Thursdays, would meet at lunchtime at the hub, which was our, of our church office. And then what he would do, he would take us, he would literally teach that, like teach that preachers what he's going to preach. So I was, up to now I'm like that, I wrote notes incessantly, word for word. I would write everything, offer to do the slides, and write all his examples. So on Sunday, I would parrot exactly what he taught. People would be confused. They'd say, that's the exact joke they told in Nalia. Even at Katikati, that's the joke they told. Yeah, because I didn't try to create. I just told. The worst thing for me was when he traveled and then told us to preach. Because then I would be like, what do I say? All I know is to repeat what you spoke. So God started to do something in me. However, let me talk about the last one or two years. So I started to, the, the teaching thing became easier and easier. Um... Now, we planted, we left Worship Harvest Katikati, and Apostle asked us to plant Worship Harvest downtown, 2019. So we planted that location. It started to grow. I was really happy to teach. Actually, I was convinced that the people were coming because I was teaching, right? Gifted people. Am I talking? Um, because, you're, you're, because when I would be away, the numbers would dwindle a bit. When I would be around, the numbers would grow. And, 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 and I started to think, oh, maybe I'm a good teacher. Uh, maybe that's why the people are coming. Now, come 2020, the lockdown comes, and then we are learning all these things, and now I'm so excited to be around where Apostle is. And we started to broadcast live. 
the sermons that he was teaching. So we've moved from every location has their pastor, they are used to the voice of their pastor, to now you're putting a broadcast of Apostle Mose teaching at the location. What's going on in your mind? You're probably thinking we are going to lose people because they like the style of their preacher. But because of what I had understood, I actually realized that this is so much better. They get to hear directly from apostle. But then there was resistance. So people started to say, at first what we'd do is 9, 9 a.m. would broadcast the service um, live on the screen. And then 11, we would have the live preacher preaching. Then, then apostle started to ask me to stay behind and preach in the 11 a.m. instead of going to downtown to teach. So then the people came to tell me, and they think they thought I would probably feel good. You know, our numbers are not working because people don't like. They prefer that live when you're around to teach live. Oh. I told them, gather. I sat them down and told them, I need you to listen to me. This is the shepherd of this house of worship harvest ministries. If you cannot receive him, you cannot receive me. So I told them, listen, that you are at an ad you know the advantage you have to be hearing from the leader of the movement every Sunday instead of another voice? I said, do you understand? Because it was my opportunity to, I would have been like, yeah, that's what they've told us to do. But I recognize that they don't understand what I've understood. So I told them to help you understand, we are going to start broadcasting both services live. Nine and 11, I will not be available to teach you. I need you to get used to the voice of the key shepherd in this ministry and enjoy when he preaches. When he would come onto the screen, we would all stand up on our feet and give him a standing ovation to welcome him. We would get excited. Pastor Jeremy and I were the biggest noisemakers. They started joining us. People started getting excited. I want you to know that without me appearing to preach a sermon at our location, the numbers grew from 200 to almost 2,000 now. I don't teach. They have come to him, but not just that, you should hear the miracles. Now, what has happened is that wherever he is, they follow him. Like if his people leave their workplaces sometimes and ask for time off in the middle of the day to go somewhere, he's teaching something they've had before. But you people, I have seen our leaders thrive. They've grown. They, they are growing in their finances, their marriages. They are, they are receiving the prophetic. They hear things. They hear instruction. When you meet the leaders at downtown, they look like location pastors. Yes, they sound like location pastors. They lead. But what had to happen was first in my heart, as a leader, I had to understand who Apostle Mose is and then help my people. Because your people, wherever you're leading, they esteem you a certain way. In fact, they probably feel closer to you than Pastor Im and Pastor Carol. They are probably more excited about you than they are excited about them. To help them to be excited about them is to then save yourself because the day you need, God needs to transition you. It doesn't matter which leader comes. They will believe that whichever leader they have sent is the leader they need at the time and they'll embrace them just the same. And the movement will continue. Thank you. Wow. I mean, and I didn't know that all of that was going on. I was just being shocked by the growth at Worship Harvest downtown and just celebrating it. I didn't know people had conspired <laughs> to mute their teacher. <laughs> Guys, are you understanding? Stop trying to suck the breasts of the neighbor's wife. Look, it... <laughs> Neighbor's mother, neighbor's mother, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You have understood. Yeah. Yeah. The food you need is the food being cooked at your home. Yeah. The neighbors, they may be putting too much aromat, what, whatever. It smells nice. You are. You are this end across the wall, you smell, and if you are in the Great Wall walls, it's not even across the wall, it's across the window. Like one window is here, one window is there. Like, man, those guys can't get 
cook. Yes, they can cook. It doesn't mean it's time to move families. It even change names. You are Edward in Jeroge. Before we know it, <laughs> um, nowadays I go by Edward Ondachi. Like, what happened? <laughs> it's a food. <laughs> ah, I feel like I've been understood. And then the apostles, the miracles. You see, miracles follow the word. You see, the problem with a lot of Christians, yeah, this is not Mavuno problem, but some other places I know, people are looking for miracles like a problem. They will be robbed, conned, what, every possible thing out there to get some miracle. No. Miracles follow the word. Let me show you, I was reading recently in my time of study, this scripture, Acts 19, <clears throat> from verse 8, it says, and he went into the synagogue, this is Paul, in Corinth, and spoke boldly for three months. No, Ephesus. This is in Ephesus. He spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. And this continued for two years. So that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. This guy taught daily. You know, part of the problem of discipleship is that your disciples are hearing from you once a week. It doesn't work. There's another Bishop Doug example. I don't know whether it works here. Can I give it? Dr. Dr. Emma, can I try? I'm going to bring it later. So that just when I'm about to go off the stage is when I'll bring it. <laughs> but he says, Paul, he says, he continued for two years teaching what? Daily in the school of Tyrannus. He, he hired the hall and every afternoon he would teach. Can you imagine Paul is preaching every day for two years? What happened? He says, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now, there was no Facebook Live, there was no YouTube. So how did, if the guy was only teaching in one spot, how did everyone in Asia hear the word? The people who came and heard him preach. They would go and preach the same thing everywhere. They went everywhere, planting churches in Colossae, all the cities. People would come and sit there at Paul's feet Hearing him teach, and then they would go and start churches in their cities. Be oh, yeah, yeah. He says, All who dwelt in Asia, he wasn't on TV, he wasn't on radio, he wasn't on YouTube. It was live transmission, people listening and taking what they've heard. Paul tells T Timothy, The things you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit this to faith. Don't commit whatever you haven't heard from your disciples, from your disciple. Don't teach people what you haven't been taught here. I know that sounds like control, but when you have a certain mindset, that's why it sounds like control. The point I'm asking is how good are your results? Yeah, get, judge everything by results. Because the most high-sounding philosophy can be the killer of your ministry. Because the result we see here is that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord. Now, do you know what's very funny about this verse? Is what happens next, the next verse. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. The intensity of teaching released unusual miracles. I don't know if you have ever connected the two verses. We all know how God worked an angel miracles by the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs were taken from his body and they healed the sick and cast out demons. But we don't see that it comes. It's the verse right after the fact that he taught for two years until the, the word was heard in all of Asia. 
The making of a movement. Miracles follow teaching. Amen. I'm going to use my last five minutes to share something that's not in Perth. That's why you see me putting my notes together and even like elaborately closing. Wow! I'm distributing sweets today. <laughs> Guys, you have understood. The word. Oh, I was supposed to do the example, the last example. Frequency of teaching. Frequency of teaching determines results. This is Bishop Doug. He's a doctor, by the way. He's a medical doctor, so. Just no, I am just reporting Bishop Doug's example. So don't shoot. There is something, sometimes when couples struggle to get a child, there is something called low sperm count. Hmm? Now, I used to hear low sperm count and, and would think, oh, So I understood that in a normal man, especially at the height of your powers, around 25, <laughs> the sperm count is how many, doctor? Per, this is an embryologist, so he knows them accurately. Per, 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 per mil? Somewhere between 15 to 25 million. 25 million sperms in a, a, a small teaspoon. <laughs> like... You could become a nation instantly <laughs> if there was a way. <laughs> 25 million. Guys, you're serious. 25 million. That's normal spam count. 25 million. So, you are one in 25 million. The night you were conceived, you outran 25 million competitors. Hey! You are not weak. Up People more. have claimed you are weak. What? You are strong, man! Up more. Up more. Yeah. It gets worse. Yeah. Because that is per meal. Okay, per meal. Please so don't worsen it. <laughs> Let's go with the meal. 25 million in a meal. A meal. That's about a small teaspoon. 25 million. My God. You outran 25 million fellows. They never made it. Here you are. But then what I discovered as Bishop Doug was teaching that low sperm count, I used to think low sperm count is like there is nothing. No. Low sperm count is from about 4 million downwards. Yeah, four million sperms in a meal. Somehow the baby can't you can't produce. Four million. That's a lot of people. <laughs> to not be able to come out. So you might be wondering why you're not seeing the results even as you teach. It just might be you are under teaching. Yeah. Your, your teaching count is too low to produce the results you need. So for the word to go to all of Asia, Paul had to teach daily. For two years and something. I have two minutes. In addition to all of what we've shared in Perth, here is one thing that I know for sure you're going to have to grapple with to investigate, to make possible what you are looking at. You all must move into radical generosity with God. Yeah. Well, if, if, if we haven't
caused too much chaos and they invite us back. One time we'll come and talk about that. Radical generosity. You see, all who had brought money to the apostles, what? Feet and no one had luck. To have a true movement, to have a true, true movement, you must move into radical generosity. As an individual, as a leader, as a church, you just have to. I have not seen that these things work well without it. I haven't seen that these things work well without radical generosity. I can tell you that the people I came with who are here today, these are some of the most generous people to worship harvest, and yet they are the leaders. Each of them, if you go and look at their tithe records, at their locations, at their campuses, they are in the top five. Some of them are the top. Top five or at worst top ten givers in their own campuses. Radical generosity is necessary for any movement. The way you give of your time, you see all these people who are here, half of this team are not even on staff. But even if I was somewhere else, they would still be there. They give their time. They give their leadership. They lead. They are not staff members. But they are the top leaders. The other half which is on staff, what I know about them is that the money they each give to their campuses every month is more than the salary they are paid. Radical generosity. You will never outgive God. Never. It can't happen. Radical generosity. Bible says that Solomon went up to that altar and in one night offered 1,000 burnt offerings. And God had to come down. <laughs> See, dude, what you want? <laughs> What do you want? You are provoking me. Isn't it interesting how Solomon's story turns out versus how Achan's story turns out versus how Ananias and Sapphira's stories turn out? Isn't it interesting? Solomon gave a thousand offerings and God was compelled to have a conversation with him. I think it was wherever he was and we were probably having breakfast, maybe a late night snack because it was all in the night. <laughs> and he looks through the window and he's like, what's going on? What's all this smoke and smell? He's like, Gabriel, quickly, go, go down and find out what's going on. <laughs> Gabriel comes back, oh my God, you won't believe it. <laughs> like, what won't I believe? <laughs> that boy, Solomon, David, son. He's unleashing 1,000 burnt offerings. What's the cost of a good bull or cow in this part? But you people don't do livestock. Or oh, this is not a cattle corridor in Kenya. About how much? In Kenya shillings? Ninety hundred, so hundred k. A hundred, hundred thousand Kenya shillings, right? So now do a thousand of those. Hundred million Kenya shillings offerings in one night. And God was like, "What do you want?" And then He didn't even ask for money. So just give me wisdom. And you know, did you know that the firstborn child of wisdom is wealth? That's a loaded statement. You would need a session to unload it. That's why it says that 
the crown of the wise is their riches. The crown of the wise is their riches. If you ever find someone who has a lot of money, just know automatically they are wise in the things of this world. The Bible says Solomon made silver and gold to be like stones in Jerusalem. It was that bad. It was that good. In other words, he didn't prosper for himself. He didn't prosper for him. He made it available for everyone. And then the Queen of Sheba, some African girl, decides I'm going to be dazzle this guy. Anyway, that wasn't her decision. It was her heart. She knew she's, she had read about Solomon and she said, I must go see this guy. And she went loaded. Now, as you can imagine, Jerusalem Hotel was full of guests all waiting to see Solomon because the Bible says that all the kings and all whatever, they all wanted to see Solomon and tap into his wisdom. So as you can imagine, those days there were no telephones. They couldn't make appointments. So you had to come and wait maybe for months before you could see him. This girl comes, and I think it was the sentries who first saw like a kilometer long of camels. Hi, who's that? What? what? Anyway, long story short, she comes. She, of course, they didn't put her in the waiting on the waiting list. So right to Solomon's court. Even Solomon had to quickly dress up to receive her. I'm sure you're you're listening to Moses' version. I imagine he was there having lunch and there like, you, you were here. <laughs> Some African girl has come with stuff. I was like, what? Yeah, bring my whatever robe, crown, let's go meet her. And she came in and asked very hard questions and he answered all of them. And then she says, the Bible says, when she saw, you, you, you have found our text. Or you are waiting for an instruction. When she saw the, the wisdom of Solomon. It's very interesting that they use the word so. Wisdom is seen, not heard. Talkers abound. Yeah, many people can talk until you say, show me what you've done. When she saw the wisdom of Solomon. See, when you go to Isaac's house, you see wisdom. Yeah, I'm telling you. You really see, it's visible. So when she saw the wisdom of Solomon, and, and the what? The food on his table. Can you imagine food? Yeah, this woman was knocked off by the way Solomon's food was served. Someone else is about to find that other scripture about the food. It's usually Pastor Angela who is in charge of that verse. Because she's very passionate about restaurants. <laughs> the food on his table, the dressing of his, the sitting of his servants, the service of his waiters. The, their apparel and his cup bearers. And his entryway by which he went up to the house uh -huh. of the Lord. First stop there before. The servants. Mm. The servants. We always challenge, I don't know how it is in Kenya, but in Uganda, almost every middle class, class household has people who work there. Servants, people who serve in the house. And we always challenge each other mm. about those people. When if your guests come, you see, I'm talking about radical generous and you think I'm talking about you tithing only. I'm talking about a heart. I'm talking about a heart issue. Because some people are generous at church and mean to their workers at home. Yes. Every single person who has worked in our house, even those who just didn't understand the vision, we have raised them. Yes. We have elevated them. The first thing we ask when they come is, where did you stop in, in school? We take them back to school. They are working, but they are schooling. Yeah. Finish high school, go to the next level. One of them finish, you know, you hear your high school is up to senior four hours, is up to senior six. She finished senior six, 
we enrolled her into the Law Development Center at uh, the our it's, yeah, Law, law Development school. Center. She graduated. She's going to law school next year Come to become on. a lawyer. Yes. Look, she still lives with us. Do you know what? She used to call me uncle. Do you know what she calls me now? Dad. Dad. I'm talking about a mindset. Are you a person who is always advancing the kingdom everywhere, even in your house? Yeah. Yeah. And, and we have two. Then the other one also. Yeah. And we don't have some small house outside the house where they live. No. They live in one of the self-contained bedrooms in our house. They're part of the family. When it's dinner time, we all sit at the table and have dinner. There is no servant and, and son in our house. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. What do people think when they see your servants? Do they look so different from the other people in the house that it is obvious? Go change it. This is an instruction. Go change it. Yeah. You have what it takes to change it. Yeah. She says, and the way, entryway by which she went to the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And then what did Solomon do? He gave her even more things than she came with. You will never ought to give royalty. Yeah. Royalty, Mavuno, become a house of royalty and behave like that. Did you know that in worship harvest, it's completely unexpected and almost ununderstood if you go to visit a person without carrying a gift? Yes, imagine. It's like you have an emergency. I'm talking about I go to the Biamanzi's house. Yeah. They are my friends. They are, I can't go empty handed to their house just because they are my friends. No. We are royalty. That's how royal people behave. I must go. <laughs> A culture of radical generosity, of royalty, of abundance, of advancing other people the whole time. That is what makes, it's part of what makes a movement work. Amen. Amen. Be generous with God. Be generous with friends. Be generous with people. Honor your father and mother with substance. With substance. Don't just send them WhatsApp messages <laughs> and fire emojis. Send them M Pesa. That, that is in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees for saying, that, that they are not going to give their father or mother some of their profit because they have made the pledge to the temple. No. Be generous with God. Be generous with your parents. And just before I'm short at and thrown rocks at, be generous with your spiritual parents, whoever they are, at whatever level. Because it says the elders are worthy of double honor. If it says honor your father and mother, and it's with substance, the elders are worthy of the what? Double honor. You can't, you can't have a, a proper movement when there is no generosity across the board. <laughs> Up, down, across. God bless you. Thanks for having us this week. <laughs>